All right, so thank you for having me, Nandu. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come speak to you guys today. So my name is Andy Kriebel, and I'm the head coach at the Information Labs Data School. Nandu asked me to come here today to talk to you guys about data visualization, um, the charity project that we did for Connect to Help in the U.S., and sort of, uh, so I'm going to kick it off with, you know, I guess the overarching theme, I sort of put in here the words that you told me to put. So, uh, you know, the importance of data visualization and analytics. So I, I've kind of broken this presentation up into two bits. I want to take you guys through a couple of examples of how visualization can be impactful. And then I'm going to take you through the project that we did with Connect to Help and show you how we're contributing back to the community for charity. So everybody here is from a charity, is that right? Or almost everybody? Okay, who's not from a charity? <coughs> How'd you get invited? No, just kidding. Uh, so for those charities, I'm going to talk later about how you could do a project with us. So if you're interested, just uh, talk to me. Talk to me afterwards. So the first thing, oh, I do have a remote. I should just use this. Uh -oh. Okay, there we go. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, the purpose of data analytics. So why do we do it in the first place? Well, for me. Ultimately, we do it to win. I'm an Arsenal fan, so this is the last time we're going to win something for who knows how long. Um, but we do it to win, to get a competitive advantage, and really, we ultimately do it to make our companies money or to make a contribution back to the, to the people that we're supporting. Another great thing about data analysis is that if you do it the right way and if you have, if you have the skills and the techniques, you can learn to find the things that you didn't know were there. So that's the most fun thing for me when I'm doing data analysis or when we do a project is the insights that you get that nobody expected you to get. And you know that really makes you feel good and you get excited when you go home. And that, to me, that's the key to data analysis. But you also want to make sure that you make an impact and maybe even change the world. So this is an example of, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So why is data visualization important and why should we care? So for me, it's not only the quickest way to find answers to complicated questions, but it also allows you to tell stories in a manner that tables simply cannot do. And I'm going to take you through an example on how I, how I do that. For me, I'm a Tableau Zen master, so obviously Tableau, to me, is the best tool that you can use for rapid fire data analysis, data exploration, data visualization, and storytelling. So let me take you through an example. And hopefully this works OK. So how many of you have been data analysts before? Or have, have any, any, everybody's probably done data analysis some way, right? So typically, data analysis starts like this. And we all think that we're really good at it. So in this particular data set, I'm looking at uh, the number of cases, sorry, the font's really small, uh, the number of cases of measles in the United States from 1928 to 2003. And let me make the font a little bit bigger for you. Hopefully we can, we can see it. OK, can you see that a little bit better? So this is a really typical way to do analysis. And we've all done analysis this way before. And why is that? Why have we done it this way before? Because of the tools that we have, right? Because we all learn Excel. And Excel is the tool that we're given. So there's nothing wrong with doing analysis this way. You're just not going to find anything interesting. It's going to be incredibly complicated. So as I scroll left to right, I might start to notice a couple of patterns in numbers, right? So you know, it, it looks like, for example, if I'm looking just at Alabama, there was a big spike in 1952. But then as I go left to right, I have to think back and try to remember what those numbers are. So it just makes it more difficult than it really needs to be. So in Tableau, I can just make a couple of simple changes. So for example, I can take my number of measles cases and throw that on the color palette. And suddenly, I have a totally different story. I can maybe add a little border on here, tell it to fit the entire view, and now look what happens. Could you have seen that insight in that table? There's no way that that, that could have happened. Does anybody know why we're seeing this change from the, from the bad to the good? There's a vaccination. 1963, a vaccination came out. And suddenly, the disease is all but eradicated. So what are some other ways that you can visually display this? So let's look at a series of maps. So if I just double click on, on, the, uh, on the state, you put the cases on the color. And let's get a few on the color. And I can start to tell a story. So this is called a 
discover something. So what I'm looking at is every single year in a small map. you can see a very different story. You can start to see geographic patterns. So for example, you can see going, well, you read this in a Z pattern, so the, most, the oldest year is upper left, the newest is the bottom right. So you read left to right, top to bottom. And you can see that it looked like it was pretty consistent that the disease was you know, just around for a really long time. And then it's suddenly about halfway through, it starts to fade out. Well, what's really interesting to me is in the early two or late mid 90s to late 90s, you're starting to see a comeback of the measles. So I think, I don't know why that is, but I suspect part of that is that some people are just choosing not to get vaccinated anymore. So they're just choosing not to have their kids vaccinated because they think that there's, uh, so Jenny McCarthy, I think, is the famous person that refuses to get her kids vaccinated. So that's the only explanation I can think of. Now, the reason you see California and Texas showing back up is simply because of population. So you would probably want to add a little bit of context to this. One other way that you might want to do this is through a series of, so what I did is I, I grouped my years into uh, uh, basically four or five year buckets. And I want to simply look at the number of cases per year. And you, you know, this is one way to look at it. But another thing that I could do then is I could take state and year and I could continue to drill down into this data set. I could make these circles and put I'm going to hopefully I don't break this. There we go. And now I can even maybe throw a little box plot on here and I can look for my outliers. And now when I view this, you can see every state and every, uh, every year in, this, in the same view. And you can see where your major outliers are. Uh, so we not only get a sense for that, for that overall pattern, the rise and then the, the decline, but you can see the sheer volume of the number of cases. And to make the data more impactful. So I think we can all agree that um, data visualization is great for finding patterns. Was it much easier to see the patterns that way than it was through the table? How long would it have taken us to find those things in the table? Maybe never, right? So that's the power of data visualization. So displaying data visually helps us see the impact that measles had and how the cases have been eradicated. But what about data visualization? So we talked about th that example was kind of looking historically. And it's really easy to analyze data if it's you know, kind of really old. But what if we want to analyze data as it's happening? So I want to take you through a story. And hopefully you guys have heard this one before. But I think one day this might be a good example of how data visualization actually could probably maybe save the world. So we've all seen the, we've all seen the slides from Fox and News where they try to confuse us. Have people seen those? where they do the, the pie charts that add up to about 220%, or the bar charts that don't start at a zero axis. They do things to intentionally confuse us. But does more serious stuff happen? Let's go back to the 1970s and look at some tabular data. So this is a minute-by-minute -minute report provided to Mission Control. I know it's, really, it's kind of hard to see on the screen. Uh, it's a minute-by-minute -minute report provided to Mission Control during the Apollo 13 uh, landing. So they were trying to, to come back and land in the United States. So this is not the movie with Tom Hanks. This is the actual, the actual, uh, the actual mission. So there's a lot of really uh, sharp dressed guys and uh, smart guys, really sharp dressed, smoking cigars that get these things every couple of minutes or every minute, and they're supposed to be able to look at these cars and try to find patterns in them. But they can't. It's too difficult. Can you see what happened? Well, you can't because the focus isn't that good. But even if you could, you wouldn't be able to see you know, that, that the shuttle just exploded. Fortunately, <clears throat> if they had, well, unfortunately, nobody died. But the, uh, if they were able to use data visualization instead, they would have easily seen the oxygen level increasing on, the, uh, in that, on that yellow line there. And they would have seen that the, that the second tank was about to explode. But they didn't have data visualization tools at that time. They had to try to memorize the numbers and find these patterns, which are nearly impossible. So like I said, fortunately, everybody came home, but barely. 
So at the data school, we want to have the same kind of impact. We want to make a difference. And our second cohort of the data school that just finished last month, um, we did a project for uh, as part of the Tableau Foundation. And has anybody heard of the Tableau Foundation? Any of the charities heard of the Tableau Foundation? Yes, some, a couple mostly knows. Well, the Tableau Foundation is a way for Tableau to connect Tableau users to charities to do basically pro bono work for, for the charities. So as part of this project, um, in July of 2015, Craig Bloodworth and I, he's another Zen master at the Information Lab, we were contacted by uh, the Tableau Foundation to possibly do a project for Connect to Help. And Connect to Help is a nonprofit that facilitates connections between people who need human services and those people that offer the human services. So they're basically a way for people to connect in those, hence the name Connect to Help. Um, and they reached out to us as part of our participation in the Tableau Foundation. And their goals and needs were really simple. All they wanted was an ETL process that took their referrer data, so the people that, that are referring themselves to the system, matched it up, uh, transformed it, loaded, and put it back into their MySQL database. That was it. Eventually, they wanted to maybe do something in Tableau. But all they asked for is the scope of this project was simply an ETL workflow. Well, we got that done in about 20 minutes. So we had to think, well, what else can we do? How can we have a bigger impact on this project? Because that wasn't enough for us. We have eight consultants that, that were wanting to work on this project. So I'm going to take you through four visualization examples that, that, uh, that were created during this project. So the first one was, this one was done by Benedetta. So her goal was to create an advertisement, something that's emotive, that sort of gets the attention of people that are visiting their website or of legislators to try to, under, so people can understand the magnitude of the problem and the difficulty that they're having with uh, connecting people to the services that they need. So we kind of started at the top with kind of these overall numbers, these KPIs, 217,000 calls a year, almost 24 calls per hour. So people don't understand how much service, how many this level of services that this charity actually provides. So it's a great way for us to use infographics and data visualization in order to get that word out. So if we had stopped there, this was the first presentation we did to them. And they thought that was the end, and they were absolutely delighted with what we had done. But we had seven more. <coughs> the next one was done by Simona. So this is more of an explanatory dashboard that provides a general overview of the situation. It explains what's going on as it, as it currently stands. Her dashboard allows the management team, this is more for internal use, for their management team to effectively plan staffing. So you can see the curves of when the calls come in, so they can, they can uh, plan staff properly. They can understand who is calling and what they're calling about. Anuka created this dashboard, which is more of an exploratory dashboard. Um, this allows Connect to Help to dig deeper into whose needs, whose, uh, whose needs are being met, whose needs are not being met, what are the services they're asking for, why are these needs not being met. And this view also gives you the geographic distribution of where the calls are coming from. And the last example I want to show you was done, by, was done by Ben Moss. He created a visualization which allows you to find ways to offer help. So let's say you're somebody that has a service that you want to provide. You want to volunteer to as one of the people that can get matched up. You want to be the service provider. Well, he created this tool to allow you to go in. You specify your zip code and um, you know, how, many, how many days you want to go back and look and see what people needed for help. So this is something they could easily put straight onto the website, and people could sign up and, vo and uh, volunteer their services. These are all things that they didn't have before. They had no way to engage the community. So all of this took them four days. So we only, uh, the way that we do projects at the data school is they get a project on a Monday morning, and they, they deliver the presentations on a Friday afternoon. But given that this company was, on the East, was is in the US, really Monday doesn't count because it's Monday afternoon when you get started. So we do all this stuff in four days. We had an ETL workflow, eight dashboards, and absolutely no cost to the, to the company. So we do these projects for free. So this quote from Ann Hartman, the director of strategic data analysis at Connect to Help 211, says it all to me. Her quote clearly shows that a small, dedicated, smart team of people who know how to properly display data can make a massive impact. So how's your company? you know, uh, making an impact 
with data visualization. If you'd like to do a project with the data school, feel free to connect with me after during the social hour or whatever it's called. I don't want to say happy hour. I don't know if that's okay or not. Um, just let me know. Um, I bet we can have just as big an impact with you guys as we do with Connect to Help. We plan out projects every other week for the data school, and we're always looking for projects to volunteer. The only thing that we require from you is a bit of your time and access to your data. So I believe data visualization is a key tool which allows us to make discoveries and communicate them. Maybe data visualization will indeed one day save the world. Thank you. <laughs>